This guide will show you how to automate cookies in PlateUp. To make cookies, you first need to crack an egg. Then combine the chopped egg with sugar and flour in a mixing bowl, and knead it to form cake batter. Now pick which flavor you want to add to the batter. We are doing chocolate, which needs to be melted down before it can be added in. Pour the flavored batter into the cookie sheet tray and then bake the tray. As we've been doing this manually, you can see the automated setup above has also been running to produce a tray of chocolate cookies. We were able to beat out the automated setup thanks to ovens having a 2x cooking speed boost. As you can see, it's a compact but slow setup, but I'll go over what you can do to make it faster at the cost of using up more space. Starting with adding in a portioner, which will allow us to instantly pick up a cookie to serve and act as a one cookie buffer that allows the next tray of cookies to start cooking sooner, as well as allows us to stay out of the Hobbs mess radius. The faster we empty the tray, the faster the next batch of cookies can start being made, which is where our next upgrade, a prep station comes in. Go with a frozen prep station if you can, to save leftover cookies to serve the next day. You will want to use two grabbers, pulling off the portioner, for maximum cookie production speed. Otherwise, as you can see on the right, if you only use one grabber, the portioner will have to pause and wait for the grabber to clear, which will delay the next batch of cookies being made. You are probably serving up cookies faster than the prep station refills, so let's upgrade the safety hob to a danger hob next, which will more than double the cookie production rate. Don't worry about burning cookies, since the grabber will automatically take the tray off the danger hob when it's done cooking, and the portioner will hold the tray in place, not returning it until it's emptied of cookies. We can produce cookies even faster if we add a second tray into the danger hob loop, so while one tray is being unloaded, the other tray can be cooking. You can do this by either buying a second cookie tray or using a freezer to duplicate the tray by placing it inside the freezer right before the day ends. Find a freezer by either getting its blueprint in the shop or by researching a counter with the research desk. The portioner will hold the tray inside the freezer until it's empty, which has the benefit of saving a few extra cookies for the next day, in addition to what's in the frozen prep station. Just be careful to check where the trays are in the cooking loop near the end of the day to not accidentally lose the freezer tray copy. Now you may be tempted to swap out the basic mixer making the cake batter with a rapid mixer. However, it's not really needed. The bottleneck of the system is the cooking speed. Even adding more cookie trays beyond two will not help the setup produce cookies any faster. As you can see, even though the rapid mixer produced a bowl of cake batter faster, both cookies still came out at exactly the same time. What does make sense, however, is upgrading the basic mixer to a conveyor mixer. Even though it runs at the same speed as the basic mixer, it will allow us to condense the whole setup to fit a 4x7 space. Note, having only one grabber going off the portioner is fast enough to keep up now, since we have multiple trays waiting for a tray to be emptied. To start the next batch of cookies is no longer as big a bottleneck like it was earlier. If you stick with the basic mixer setup to make the other cookie flavors, you just need to swap out the L-shaped middle section, making chocolate flavoring with a lemon or coffee version. And be sure to reset the smart grabber to pull the correct flavor of batter. Even simpler, for the conveyor mixer version, just swap out the 2x2 flavor section on the top left for the flavor of your choice, no smart grabbers to reset. If you don't have two coffee machines, it is still possible to just use a single machine to make coffee flavor cookies. However, it will require more grabbers and space, and will only work with the basic mixer setup. If you haven't already, consider swapping out the prep station for a teleporter, allowing you to place the setup wherever you have space, or start serving straight to table. I hope you found this cookie automation guide useful. Leave a like on the video if it helped you out, and subscribe if you want to see more plate-up food automation guides like this one.